right. I'm Anne Hardy and I'm Jeff Wilkinson's eldest daughter and uh, like my sister I was born in America and we brought, was brought back to England at the tender age of four or thereabouts I think. Um, and when we came back from the States we f first lived in a flat in Porchester Gardens uh, in Bayswater in a ground floor flat and later my father bought a small modern house that was built in the garden of the old vicarage across the road. Um, my earliest memory really of Jeff is the day my sister ran away from home from the London flat. Um, I suppose she was aged about four at the time or something, clutching her teddy bear. And Jeff following, I mean I followed Jeff and Jeff you know, creeping down the street and peering cautiously around the street corners because he knew perfectly well that if Penilla caught sight of him, she would take to running. <laughs> um, he was a very, very sweet man at home. Um, not, not a very hands-on dad, but um, very patient, a bit distant. He could be very funny. Um, I always had the feeling that Jeff's heart and his mind was really in chemistry and that was what he thought about when he wasn't thinking about anything else. Um, uh, I'm trying to think, we used to spend large parts of the year in Denmark because my mother was Danish and I think we spent every school holidays there um, until, until I went to university um, and Jeff spent most of the time he was there writing his book or writing a new edition of rewriting his book and I remember him sitting at the desk in the back bedroom covered in papers um, and that's how he kept himself entertained, really, while we went swimming and walked in the woods and um, generally had a good time with our friends. Um, and in that sense, he was very patient and tolerant of the fact that my mother needed to get back to her roots on a regular basis. And that Penilla and I were having a wild time, <laughs> running wild in the woods in Denmark <laughs> with our friends. Um, and then... Somewhere in the mid-60s, they bought the property in Sussex uh, and after that they spent, or we as a family, spent all our weekends in Sussex and my sister still lives in that house. Um, and Jeff did a lot in the garden there actually um, and uh, he was rather famous for losing things and the roar of who's stolen my spade would go up all over the garden um, when of course he just left it somewhere and forgotten where he put it. And I'm afraid I've inherited that tendency. <laughs> so, uh, I, it's interesting to notice traits of, from Jeff in my own character and try and, I have to try and explain to people that this is an inherited, inherited defect. <laughs> I'm not responsible, but I have to learn to control it. Um, he made a lovely thing of the garden in Sussex. My mother bought the plants and, uh, with his, his um, cooperation and he did all the planting and the weeding and the gardening and she simply picked the flowers for the house. But I think that's what kept him sort of fit and I'm quite sure he thought about chemistry while he was doing it. So, um, so there is that and um, I don't know, I just, I talked to you about this earlier, but one of the most memorable things that happened in my very peaceful and um, undisturbed childhood was, was the, the trip to Russia with the uh, chemistry colleagues from, from Imperial in 1971, I think. 70, no, 72, I think I was, I was going up to university in the autumn, so it must have been in 72. And we were put up uh, in a big hotel in central Moscow um, called the Rossia, big modern hotel. Um, and there was a restaurant on the top floor, but you couldn't get into it. So there was the odd canteen. And I think, you know, we had great, great difficulty getting any rations while we were in Moscow at that hotel. Um, and all they seemed to serve was fried eggs, which is Yashnitsa in Russian, as far as I remember. And I think we rather lived on that for the uh, week or so we were in that hotel. Uh, although they did, they did take us on some memorable excursions um, uh, out, out to sea. Um, there's a set of monasteries somewhere way outside Oxford where they put us on a coach and took us out there. But the most memorable, ex memorable excursion of all was, was uh, dinner at the uh, Dasha of the then Professor of Chemistry and Director of the Chemistry Department in Moscow 
um, who took us all, had us all ferried out there by car one evening. Um, and it was an amazing sort of place, and we were crammed into it cheek by jowl, rather like being in a small railway compartment. And they served endless courses of Russian food, accompanied by an awful lot of vodka, with the um, end effect that, that you know, half the company was well over by the time they got back to the hotel and had to be hung out on the balconies to dry overnight, so it was, uh, it was memorable for that too. Um, and then we were sent by train to Leningrad, um, which was also an interesting experience, but the hotel in Leningrad was much easier on, much easier on, the, on the, um, its, its um, residents than the hotel in Moscow had been, so that was rather nice. And in the end, we flew home, um, but we were put on a Russian jet to fly to Stockholm and, and then change. And I've never been so scared in my life, and we none of us thought we were going to get to Stockholm. It was really quite a hairy experience, but we got there and we got home safely. Um, and that just about, uh, yeah, that just about concluded that summer holiday. <laughs> um, and after I'd left home and gone to university, I, I, I came home for vacations, but I didn't see that much of them. Um, and I guess they came back into my life when I got married and I started having a family. Um, and uh, well, that's not quite true actually, because my husband and I used to go on holiday in Denmark, and we would stay. We would go first, and then they would come out later, and we'd overlap for a couple of nights, um, and that was always very pleasant. Um, so really, yes, and, and Jeff as a grandfather, was, was, uh, he was a sweetheart. One of my most vivid memories is of Jeff on all fours, trying to teach my daughter to crawl. Because she couldn't or wouldn't crawl, she bent, bent one leg under her and couldn't get, couldn't get moving. Um, and it took a while, but Jeff succeeded in the end. And I, well, she didn't crawl for very long. She walked very, very long. Um, but it's, it's that's a vivid memory. Um, he was very good with the grandchildren. And that was lovely. Um, and I can't really say any more, I think. I mean, it was a terrific shock when he died so suddenly. Um, and it taught me something about grief, too. Um, because I learnt that the, the old Victorian way of doing your mourning was the right one. Full mourning for six months to a year, and after that, you're okay. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I, it, was a, it, was a, it was a very easy and delightful childhood, and undisturbed, and um, he was a great parent in that respect. Um, and a lovely grandfather too, so I think that's really all I can say. I didn't understand at all what he did in his career, but uh, it was obviously he enjoyed it. And um, I like to think that that's, that's what I have inherited from him. I enjoy my history. I'm a historian of medicine. And, um, and I think that we have that in common at least. Yes, I think so. I've retrieved a memory recently of the year we went to Russia, which we did in the summer of 1971, when, it's a long story, the Russians had pirated Cotton and Wilkinson, and Jeff was so furious about them having done so that he was determined to take, take this invitation to go to Russia to claim his royalties. So he bought, we were going, it was part of the several people from, I think, Les Pratt. And uh, we all flew out on the same aeroplane from Heathrow and we were all put in the same hotel in, um, in Moscow, which was an enormous structure called the Rossia, with a restaurant on every corner, on every floor, at which the only obtainable food appeared to be fried eggs. Um, so as I say, Jeff had put us on a one-way ticket um, because he was going to uh, claim his royalties from the Russians and in order to buy a ticket. Home. And my poor grandfather in Copenhagen had been terribly worried about this. He expected never to see any of us ever again. But Jeff, being Jeff, got his royalties. And after a memorable evening in a dash outside Moscow, where several members of the team had to be draped out on the hotel balconies next morning, we finished up in, in, in Moscow and we took the train to Leningrad. And we spent a couple of days in Leningrad and then we flew home on an Aeroflot flight to Stockholm in 
first place. And I have never been so scared in my life. We flew very low over the sea across uh, to Stockholm and we did arrive safely, but the plane was cracking and banging and it was the scariest experience I've had in my life on an aeroplane. But Jeff came home triumphantly. He had bought the tickets home and he had money left over. And my poor grandfather had never been so pleased to see anybody in his life as when he saw us coming through the airport at Copenhagen. 